What's up everybody? I'm Justin Westbrook. And I'm Kristen Lee. And we're here today with the 2020 Toyota Supra, the raddest car of the next year. You asked us questions on Kinja. We have the car, so we're gonna answer them. So our first question comes from Mock Schnell, who asks, final count on fake scoops and vents. The over under is 10. Let's go see how many Check fake it out. scoops, vents, or whatever. There are a lot. First one here is next to the headlight. And this just seems kind of lazy, to be honest, because you know other fake vents, you can technically have stuff go through, but it's blocked off, so it doesn't actually go anywhere. This is yeah. just one solid piece of plastic with some design on top of it. Yeah, they really could have faked that better, and it just shows they didn't care. This is one of the more egregious ones, because it has this giant, just flat panel, and we think it might be like housing the sensors that the car has or something. And then, of course, if you had the issue on that side, you're going to have the issue again on this side. So we're moving along. We come to our fifth faux vent, which is here. Yeah, this um, this should be sort of like a heat exhaust for the engine compartment, which the engine is right here, if you didn't know. Um, but again, it's just like, it has some design element. It has but the, it's, the strafing. But it's know. solid. Like, why did you spend all the money to cut a hole in the hood and mill this like plastic, you know, like piece, only to have it be absolutely pointless? So, and then obviously you're gonna have a sixth vent that's the same on the other side of the hood. And then moving on to our seventh an eighth vent on the other side of the car. This fake vent, which is right here, it looks like it might be for like brake cooling. Yeah, like or a brake cooling thing. If it were functional, it's not. It again has like a grill mesh design, but no holes. It's solid. And then on top of that, they have to slap on this whole extra panel, like with oh, the door. Oh, you're right. This door is two different panels. It's two different panels. Two panels on a door. It's ridiculous. But again, like you engineered all of this just to put in a fake vent. Swing it around the back. Swing it around the back. There's another one next to the tail light. This is, I presume, for uh, heat exit. But again, because it's not an actual vent, no heat is exiting. Therefore, it has no function. So that bit. makes 10. That's, they're, they're the same on each side. So yes, final count. 10 comes to 10 so by Lopnik Math. Yeah, good job. You, you nailed it with your comment. So our next question comes from Marsh Newt, who asks, would you get this over a base Cayman? That's the Porsche Cayman, for those who don't know. Does a sweet sounding straight six make it more fun than a three pedal mid-engine sports car with a garbage four cylinder? I take offense to that. Yeah, the garbage four cylinder, a little strong. Yes, it's not the flat six that everyone loves, but it's a really nice engine, especially if you get it in GTS trim, which is the only trim that I've driven it in. I've also only driven the GTS. I think you and should only get really it in good. the GTS. It's, it's delightful. Just try the GTS, and then it won't be a garbage four cylinder. Anyway, so uh, now we have to see what this inline six cylinder in the Toyota Super sounds like. I'm going to get in and rev it up, and Kristen's going to go back and ex inhale some exhaust fumes. <laughs> That's what do it you, sounds like. Do you cross shop too? Would you cross shop both of them? That's the thing about the Supra is it's too expensive for the teenagers who watch Fast and Furious. Um, so it's definitely up there at like Porsche-ish money. Ish. Also, money. I feel like the people who are buying a Supra are just buying a Supra. They don't care about anything else. They're just like, I want the Supra. Well, like you point out, like look at the font. Yeah. You're not going to get that font on a Porsche. Is that not like nostalgic? We all grew up with Fast and Furious. Yeah. And I feel like we were about to forget one very important aspect of the Toyota Supra, and that is like, just look at it. You are not gonna get a Porsche that looks as sort of striking as this car. Every this, Porsche- This car will stop traffic. Most Porsches, you can kind of look at them and just keep on looking. Yeah, they all look about the same. Their whole lineup looks the same. Like this, there's a little bit of like FRS in this or, or 86, but honestly, like this, this is its own thing. It's not part of a lineup. It's its own unique striking design. And, and I think that's why you would ultimately probably choose this car over a Porsche. It's because it stands out. Question three comes from never speak a word again. What are the reasons to pick this over a Mustang? Would I get this car over a Mustang? No. No, no. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. I think objectively, I think the Supra looks better. In terms of show-stopping quality-ness, definitely the Supra, as we've already definitely highlighted. Definitely a showstopper. But in terms of everyday usability, the Mustang has usable back seats. They're small, but they're there, they exist. The trunk's bigger, and the Mustang comes in a lot more options. So you can get a turbocharged four-cylinder, you can get a supercharged V8, or you can get a flat plane V8, which revs to like 80 to 50 RPM with a manual, and it has a lot more power. So you can you can kind of like pick and choose a lot more with the Mustang. And that's not even to say that like the turbo four-cylinder in that car is really good. That's a really good driving it Mustang. Is. It it's is, not... especially when you get the high-performance pack one. And then you forgot a V8, which is just the GT V8. There's so cheap. There's so many options <laughs> with the Mustang. Yeah. The, the only thing is this car, you know, the Mustang has looked the same for the last few years. You know, it doesn't stand out. This stands out. But as far as like money for performance, I, it's really hard to argue against yeah. a Mustang. It's just like bang for your buck. You go in, you're like, I want a Mustang. They're like, how many cylinders? You tell them. They're like, do you want, do you want automatic? Do you want manual? You tell them. And they're like, color. And you're like, wow, so many colors. It's like picking from Skittles. Yeah, you walk in with anywhere from what, like 30 to 60 to $80,000. And based on those numbers, they yeah. give you a number of cylinders. There's, a, there's an amazing flow chart of Mustang, which I, I, I appreciate. Beautiful. Our last and final question comes from King Ginger, Nietzsche as a Finnish F1 driver, who asks, can you fit Justin in the boot? Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. Well, I have no metal on my bosom, as you can see, as you get a close up. Uh, and let's see if I can do this. Yeah, however way you see fit, bud. Think, this this seems to be first. your technique, but first. Uh, and then We're this. gonna leave this down as God intended because that's the way the show is supposed to be. For head access. Right, you can remove it, but oh, we wow. thought not to this time. There's a lot of space in here, actually. Oh, okay, close me. Good, good, good. Yep. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. Bye. There we go. Well, to answer your question, yes, it does fit one grown Justin. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Our last and final question comes from King Ginger Nietzsche as a Finnish F1 driver that says, can you fit Justin in the boot? Hmm, let's, give it a shot. let's try. I like climbing into things. Okay, here's the boot. Oh, oh there's a... Well, we won't be yeah. needing that. <laughs>